so that the uh all right we're live <laughs> doing it live <laughs> the, uh, controversial question i guess it's gonna be a mystery now yeah right let's, let's gonna, see yeah. let me see if i can it always takes me a minute to pop open the chat there's always a segment because what i sometimes i watch these after and it's like we're yapping and it's like, oh, we're live, but we're right. not, we're live like five seconds before, but 20 seconds before. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know if it comes out, it pops out at the exact same moment every time, but sometimes it's like right when I hit the button, it'll connect. Other times it takes a minute to connect. So that's why I, usually, I say it right before I hit the button. So at that point, everything after. So like right now, and usually, even though like we're live now, there's not a whole lot of people yet, but it will be on the, the replays. Exactly. <laughs> we got a few people. Right. The chat open. Chat's open. Five people watching. How was your week, man? It was good. It was solid. Nothing too uh too noteworthy, but pretty chill. We help a buddy move. Moving's always a pain, man. I'm hoping I won't have to do it again for a while. He dropped everything and went to San Diego, California for his uh, I don't want to get too personal details, but he did surgery right away and apparently for his daughter. Two okay. twins. And apparently I had to wait like you would have had to wait like a year and gone through three surgeries here in Ontario. Damn. Or doing it like in October. Instantaneous. Instantaneous. Leave. Yeah, I just was out in San Diego about a week and a half ago, actually, for just yeah. overnight to go to see a concert. So it was pretty awesome. As a um definitely bet nicer than um any other part of California. That I've yeah, been in. there's some kind of oil spill there too out of LA. Maybe um, I hadn't heard about that. Yeah, right. They just capped it today, I think. So yeah, it was some three thousand barrels of oil outside of. Wow. Unfortunate. All right, we'll do it live. Yes, Kyle. Yes, we will. we will. Welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome. Fantastic. Yeah, we have a couple interesting things for you today. We, we do actually have a guest that's going to be coming on soon. So we will fulfill the, uh, the, the full trifecta part. We won't be lying about that. We've got an interesting topic with, uh, with him. So this is somebody that neither of us really know particularly or at all, really. Shave was able to find him through Facebook, I believe. And uh, the idea is just to get someone who is within the prepping community that is basically pro-vaccine. So we don't know exactly what this uh, individual stance is. Um, we're just going to talk it over, see if there is really a case to be made. Um, my personal thoughts, I mean, I'm sure you know about it. There's a total difference between being like making a case for why you might want to take it versus why you want, might want it to be mandated. So we'll go over that with them and things like that. See what the uh, distinctions are, what they think, and to see if anyone agrees or disagrees. And then, uh, that will probably be relatively short and 15, 20 minutes, something like that. We're not trying to get too granular. Not throwing you know stats and whatever at each other, just gonna keep a kind of bird's eye view of the situation, just to get a general. Uh, like I said, just to see what the case is. Dirty and violence, we throwing slings. Yeah, at shaking the camera. Ah! <laughs> um, <laughs> of course, I have ultimate veto power. I can just mute and ban people. <laughs> I'm sure you could cut. Them I out. seriously don't think that's gonna be necessary. Yeah, we have but, back to, when's the last time we had a guest? It's been it's been quite time. a while. Quite a while. We haven't been very good at it. But yeah, and then we also have, we're probably going to go over a couple quick prompts and then go over the a potential, like what I consider to be busted prepper myth. So that should be interesting too. Actually, we could go ahead and do that now since we got about 10 minutes since our guest is probably going to pop in. Awesome. I'll do, I'll do a, we'll do a quick blurb for the busted prepper myth. So the uh, let me pull up the email. We had our... Uh, resident somewhat expert chime in for because this is something that I had very strongly felt was um, the case and I just needed to get basically confirmation for someone who had more of a background in chemistry things like that so the basically the myth is and I've heard this from a lot of preppers um, but never been able to figure out where it originated it's just somewhere someone said at one time and then it sounded like it could be real so everyone kind of uh, has been propagating it is that if you take a barrel like a water barrel a water jug or any kind of storage container that you're storing water in that you shouldn't set it directly on concrete 
like in your patio or on your basement or your garage, because chemicals in the concrete, some kind can leach into the water and somewhat contaminate it. So that always seemed weird to me. Before, before you give the answer, I'd just like to chime in with something, but please continue. No, go for it. I was just going to elaborate and there is a, we talked about this too, after like briefly, I was suggesting that some people may be construed in their thinking in that the chemicals will leach actually from plastic if it's under heat. Right. So maybe the whole process was concrete, heat, chemicals, it's actually BPA. Right. But any, anyways. And that may be the origins of it that people have heard Oh, like if you set it or something next to something, or maybe the, the pad was heated, or somehow if the plastic gets heated, like outside on your patio, and yes. it's like lots of plastics contain BPAs and other things that, uh, you know, that it can be problematic that can, especially when the plastic is heated, can be released into the water, which are like endocrine disrupting chemicals and stuff like that, which aren't acutely like toxic. Like if you, there's a lot of like this type of plastic actually right now can be one of the offenders if it gets heated. But, you know, it's not going to, like, kill you instantly or something. It can just have long-term negative effects. You're gonna so that's a – yeah. Yeah, you're not going to go to the hospital or something, but it could cause your, like, testosterone levels to be crappy or mess with people's periods or whatever. But that's that could be an origin of it, that that, that concern of watch out what's coming from the plastic container somehow transform into it coming from the concrete directly. Mm -hmm. But my thoughts were that I know concrete is used for water cisterns in some situations directly, not just having plastic sitting on it, but literally a concrete container, certain ponds and whatever use it as well. And some people seem to be concerned that there's chemicals in there that can leach out that would raise the pH, but that doesn't seem to be a, actually happening in practice. So I'll tell you what our, uh, our buddy who you'd contacted, he said about it. He said, I certainly never heard anything about anything from concrete diffusing through a plastic barrel to contaminate water. And I have no idea how the heck something like that could happen in the first place of what actual process would be occurring there. The plastic really doesn't act like a semi-permeable membrane, which allows substances to pass through it. That's why we use it for containers. Um, the plastic itself can and gradually will leach some of itself, generally the plasticizers and things like that. Um, like if you're in the lab setting, you said you'd have to use actually use glass most of the time to keep it completely chemical free because just the plastic itself. But um, I'm just skipping over here. However, I cannot conceive of any mechanism or compound that would come off the concrete, pass through a plastic barrel, and contaminate the water. Even the thought of that sounds moronic, to be honest. <laughs> and first of all, concrete doesn't really leach anything anyway, except for calcium carbonate, in the rare case of effervescence, that causes white crystals to form on the outside of degraded concrete, which is basically like mineral deposits you see. This is due to calcium hydroxide combining with the CO2 in the atmosphere and ultimately forming the white calcium carbonate crystals. None of this could pass through a plastic barrel as far as I know. And I have no idea how someone thinks this would be a possibility. So yeah, so basically, and that, that echoes everything I've been able to research on the subject. I have un been unable to find any direct source for someone saying like exactly how and why this would happen. Everyone's just saying that they'd heard it somewhere, but can't, doesn't know where. So I'm at this point, I'm considering that myth busted. And that's not to say that your water and your barrels couldn't somehow be contaminated, especially by the plastic itself, but that there's no additional risk that we can determine from sitting it directly on concrete. Now, as someone mentioned in the previous comments of a trifecta way back when, that doesn't mean it's a bad idea to put it on two by fours or whatever. It just means I don't see any actual risk to sitting it directly on the concrete. So considering that one busted. Excellent. Prepper myth destroyed. Yeah. Uh, Notorious BRG says, I just had two gallon water containers start leaking after roughly seven years. Yeah. I mean, the contention is like Eric was just saying that it's, it's one thing to have UV light or, or a breakdown of the plastic itself for the application yeah. against plastic, for the plastic to deteriorate and leak chemicals. So they don't, if they don't have water bottles in your vehicle sitting in the sun. But as far as uh, the myth of concrete and uh, water and plastic, well, we heard it from a preparedness individual that is a, a chemist by trade. So, the myth busted. Good job. Yeah. And um, yeah, the uh, the plastic, especially the white, like not this. This is usually PET. Um, the HDPE that is in what, like a gallon jugs, like the cloudy type. That's actually somewhat designed to like decompose. And if you leave those sitting somewhere, they will actually spring a leak. So for like after a year or two, which might, I don't know what type of plastic that $2 uh, two gallon container was, excuse me, 
But um, if you want a long-term or longer-term container, I would stick with the like a PET polypropylene or the really heavy-duty HCPE jugs like uh, that are designed for long-term, not the gallon milk jugs. Those are not good. Right. Yeah, certainly will break down. Next level geostashing. Correct. Storage, what I've done just as an experiment is I've, they say, generally speaking, long term, it's stainless steel and glass are ideal materials to contain liquids. And it's obviously, it's not practical for obvious reasons expense, fragility, and weights, right. et cetera. Uh, if you're looking at a geostash for a long period of time, mind you, in Canada, three feet below the freeze line. So it doesn't freeze if you're burying stuff. But I've, I've tried pressure canning water for hmm. fun. Yeah, they know it would certainly be the shelf life would be substantially longer in in a glass container as opposed to. to yeah, you could potentially have sterile water too. You know, for medical reasons, if you would, basically yeah. boiling it, pressure canning it, it would be sterile for until opened. It should be. It, theoretically, maybe that's another myth we got to look into. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Neat. Good yeah. The cheap compact two liter soda bottles work and are durable. Yeah, and this isn't a two liter, it's slightly smaller, but these type of bottles work well. Like I said, I wouldn't put them somewhere where they can get heated up because they a lot of these are not BPA free. But for emergency situations, you know, like if I'm in an apocalypse scenario and I'll come across a car that has this bottle and it's sitting in the sun, I'm going to drink it. Because it, like I said, there's no acute instantaneous effects from drink, drinking water with BPAs and it. it's a long-term cumulative endocrine disrupting thing. Kind of like I would consider it similar to walking through a smoky bar or something that, yeah, that's not good for you, but, um, you know, breathing that extra secondhand smoke. But unless it's a constant thing, it's, it's not going to be worth avoiding the water in a survival situation, for sure. It's, it's just from the topic, your bottle there, they, this is a technique, a survival technique for purification that I've seen done, and it does work, which is if you have a plastic bottle, you could actually put it over a fire and purify the water. and logic for most people will be chiming in saying, well, it's going to, your plastic's going to melt right. and destroy the bottle. However, if it's uh, capped off and it's, if you have the, the volume is as much water as you can put in there, it actually will not, well, it'll melt. It may deform yeah. the container a little bit, but you'll certainly purify the water. You get it to the boiling point in which you're going to kill all the viruses. Bacteria. And you could actually do that sometimes with even a plastic bag or a Ziploc or something, because the way it works is that water absorbs so much energy to get to the boiling point is that like actually boiling water is only 212 degrees. So that if you stuck this in a boiling water, it would get soft, you know, but it wouldn't literally melt. It's not quite hot enough. And the water absorbs all that energy to keep it boiling and to get to that point that if it's done right without a lot of the flame directly touching it and everything that, yeah, it won't even melt the plastic. It's pretty wild. You can, you can find videos of it. Yeah. Which certainly, you know, being consistent with what we were just mentioning a minute ago, I suppose there'd be a bit of conflict there in the, um, with the, the application of heat to the plastics, the potential of the chemicals right. from EPA specifically leaking from the bottle. But I mean, like, look, it, it was a survival situation. You're going to do whatever it is you got to do to survive. Right. You know? And getting a little BPAs versus getting water that could have like fecal bacteria in it or something like, yeah, like a, do a high dose of BPAs versus, you know, making sure you don't get Jardia or some dysentery, not even close, you know what I mean? So I definitely opt for the, little, for the, for the BPAs. Altruistic ape, she got that sexy dad look going. Okay. I gotta be careful because I'm still dealing with the stalker. So I don't know who <laughs> talking to you here online. You know, it could be uh could be any. I don't even know. I know altruistic ape. Thank you for the compliments, I suppose. Um, yes. And what do we got here? Something about half an hour of boiling water from your so we got our guest dropping in as well. Okay, let's let's go to the guest. Uh, a little background on the guest. Neither of us really know who this individual is and give them a, you know, certainly I'd like for the, this to be a civil debate if we get in the comments a little on. This gentleman's coming along to, to discuss his perspective with respect to getting the vaccine shot, the COVID vaccine shot, the motivations behind it. And I'm just going to, you know, sort of see if we can find some sort of, I don't want to say necessarily common ground, but we're going to see the indifferences between Eric and yeah. this gentleman joining us. So, Russell, yeah, because like uh, you can give a, a brief in introduction of yourself in a minute. I was just like, I 
introduced that we were going to have you on basically to find out what we would consider the case for getting the vaccine from someone who would consider themselves a prepper, basically. Since it seems pretty uh, that most people in the prepper community, but maybe I'm mistaken about this, I would say it feels like most people are against it. Maybe that's not the case. So we wanted to hear from someone who isn't against getting it to try and basically just to get both sides to hear the cases. I'm going to be neutral. I'm, you know, I don't know if I'm pro or against or whatever. <laughs> I'm going to stay out of this thing completely. Is he online now? Yeah, are you live? You can hear us? I am here and I can hear you. Sounds good. Thank you. So, just by way of introduction, my name's Russ Pagan. Um, I do a few things. I do write a political blog that I haven't been very active with lately, but uh, I'm very engaged with all of this stuff. I am a prepper. I was a Boy Scout, so I think that probably uh, is the reason why I'm always trying to be prepared. Um, and I have gotten the vaccine. Uh, in general, I do support it. And so I guess we'll get into more of that later, but um, I didn't have any issues with the vaccine. And so that's a good thing. That's Excellent. definitely good. I would, um, I think the first part is I would focus on, are you, gen there's a difference between like thinking it's a good idea to get it versus thinking it's a good idea that it's mandated. So how do you fall on that particular issue? I definitely don't agree with a mandate, although I do think that if it were mandated, we probably would get through the pandemic quicker uh, with fewer deaths, but you know, you can't force vaccines on people. Um, so that's where I stand on that. Cool. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And I think I would definitely wager that that's the biggest hang up. You know, like, I don't think it really bothers most people that some people decide to get it and think that you should get it. But the idea of it being forced is obviously very distasteful to a lot of people, especially in the yeah. community. And a lot of people really shouldn't get it if they have certain conditions, health conditions that they don't, you know, that right. they can't get it or, or it might be risky for them to get it. And then what are we going to you know, kick them out of the baseball games and everything right. else. I mean that, yeah, Crazy. that's one of the things that was really, cause I'm definitely, I don't want to get it. And I, um, I, like I said, I think it is individual. I think there's some people that it might make sense for them, but as general, I feel like the more and more I'm hearing about it, the less and less it makes sense. But one of the weird arguments like you just mentioned is that one of the things that I would keep being told is that um, everyone that can get it needs to get it because there's this class of people that for various reasons physically can't get it. And, you know, it helps to protect them. But then those same people try to implement things like you can't go to concerts, you can't go to restaurants without having fully vaccinated. So it's like, well, what about these people? They can't go then. And they were supposedly one of the whole reasons that I was supposed to get it in the first place. So it's kind of weird. What's supposed to happen to the ones you can't get it in this situation where you have to have like a vax passport to do anything? Um, sorry. And I'm not saying that you necessarily support the Vax Passport. I just don't even know what, like, the actual argument is in that situation. I haven't really heard it yet. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, there was an interesting case of a breakout at Duke University where about 345 people came down with COVID. Right. And it turned out that all but eight were uh, were vaccinated. Yeah. Um, uh, so, and, and it's an interesting case, and to me, it kind of summarizes really where the debate should be, because in this case, all these people, they didn't get, they didn't have any symptoms, so they weren't sick, they didn't have to go to the hospital, they didn't have to get intubated or risk dying, um, but at the same time, can you say that the vaccine really worked if it's spreading throughout the community that way? So, I mean, it's... and. <laughs> The CDC has been crazy. Dr. Fauci has been all over the place telling yeah. lies. And, and, and God, it, it, you know, and government's always going to screw things up when it gets into it. So anything Definitely science, agree. you talk about <laughs> science and medicine, we could probably all agree on all of that stuff. But once the government gets its hands in it, it's all done. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's one of the things that's that for me, because first of all, I'm, I'm personally, and you always have to base it from your own personal perspective, obviously I'm coming from the perspective of being in an extremely low risk group, you know, even just statistically. And then when you add in all personal things, like I just, there's this extremely small risk for COVID for me personally. So that means that any potential risk from the vaccine needs to probably be evaluated more closely. Whereas someone who's 75 years old with COPD or something like 
the, the very small vaccine risks are probably usually going to be outweighed by the fact that, but the, you know, that the fact that the, these institutions, like you said, and Fauci have, you know, been waffling, been dis- mistr- uh, untruthful, you know, that doesn't inspire a lot of confidence in it. And I think that's definitely got when they don't need to do that. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it, you know, they don't need to be untruthful about any of this. They could have come out from the start and said any of these things, but I think they, you know, they have their motives, whatever they may be, but that always is going to make people be like, Whoa, wait a second. <laughs> Yeah. SPQR, Cincinnati. It's not even, this is one of our comments here. A couple of them, actually. It's not even a vaccine. It's experimental gene therapy. Mark Olson's chimed in and says, correct. It makes your body produce a protein that coats the virus, and the immune response is triggered by that protein. Uh, Russ, I've heard a few different theories with respect to the vaccine not being a vaccine doesn't exist. There's an ulterior motive. Do you have any reservations in that respect? And do you believe that this is, it's the real, this is like the vaccine works, it's hundred percent on board. There's, you have no contentions with it. Where do you kind of stand in those two arenas? Well, I mean, I, I don't have a lot of trust or faith in a lot of things, you know, certainly not the government. Um, but I do trust my personal doctor. Uh, so when I go to them for advice, I take what they say pretty, pretty soundly. And I can do my own research, but I could spend, you know, years and not, not even cover what my doctor learned in their first semester of medical school. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know, not so, <clears throat> um, I don't want to, to completely discount all the experts. Um, but like I say, I, I go to my personal doctor for things of this nature and I trust her. I've been seeing her for a long time and I think she's great at what she does. Um, but yeah, you know, you never, I think that, that there is a good possibility this virus was leaked, that it was engineered and that it was leaked from a lab. Uh, but even if somebody poisoned you and then they offered you the antidote, you'd probably take the antidote. Um, so, yeah. Russ, yeah, I, I agree that I agree I've that there's the a very antidote. yeah, very high chance there. I mean, it's pretty much accepted now. It's a very pos- real possibility that it was uh, some kind of lab leak. Doesn't necessarily mean it was purposely released, but that it was some sort of virus that'd be meddled with. But like you're saying, I don't know if that unless it was purposeful, that doesn't really affect the um too many of the arguments for or against the vaccine in my mind, unless they did release it on purpose and then they're trying to get you to take that, that would make it more shady. But if it's just a a virus that they've been playing with and escaped, you know, that wouldn't necessarily affect too many of the arguments. But um, I think that the fact that they're treating it, like it should be treated more like a therapeutic, I think, because of, like you said, there's these groups that Harvard is having the same issue as Duke, an extremely high level of vaccine uh, of vaccination amongst their students still coming down. Still, so obviously everyone knows now you can still get it. You can still spread it. You can still actually die from it, but it does seem to lower those risks significantly. At least that's what the current data is showing. So, I mean, there is arguments you can make at this point of why, you, you know, it would make sense for some people, but they tend to shy away from that. Like the logical, you know, why wouldn't you just come out and say, Hey, this thing is still all the data shows it. You, it's a lot, it, it's harder to get it, it's harder to die from it, and it shortens the amount of time and the severity of the symptoms. Like, that's a compelling argument for a lot of people, especially people that have, are in these higher risk groups. So the, the shady part to me is that they're ignoring that and just trying to, you know, continue with the lies, continue with the forcing it. And that alone for me is the single biggest reason why I wouldn't take it. It's just because of the shadiness combined with the fact that personally, like I said, my risk is extremely low anyway, so. Yeah, and recently it came out that um, the CDC recommendations are not to aspirate the needle when they give the injection. And so if they happen to get it into a blood vessel, then the vaccine is going directly into the bloodstream rather than into the muscle. And apparently that's what's causing the swelling of the lining of the heart that's that's been going around in some of the younger kids. Um, Interesting. So they're so I haven't actually heard that they're trying. They're they're saying that the like the myocarditis and stuff is in, is related to the, the way that they're injecting it, not necessarily to the contents of the vaccine. Yes. That's interesting. And I very much suspect that the Biden administration has its fingerprints all over that because mm. they were so much trying to get this vaccine into everybody. And if you, if you hit a blood vessel and, and the syringe fills with blood, when you aspirate the needle, 
right. you've got to throw that vaccine away. That the, the vaccine is gone and the and the syringe is gone, and you got to get a new one and start over. So I ju- I just suspect that they were like, you know, we don't want to waste any vaccine. Just stick it in there, shoot them up with it, and hope for the best. And I, I just have a, a bad feeling that that's what had happened. I mean, that certainly could be the case. Obviously, the the other side of the uh, argument would be that that's complete, you know, that they made that up as an excuse for why there's these heart issues and that they're covering for it. Because, I mean, that all the people injecting these vaccines and CVSs and doctor's office, people who are basically professional injectors would have had to have been messing this up all in unison all across the country for that to have any appreciable uh, effect on like the statistics of like heart issues. So, you know, it's also possible they've said, maybe this is possible. And then they're trying to to say that that's why, because I mean, I know that um, Scotland had some like mystery 25% increase in heart issues, which, you know, of course doesn't necessarily related to the vaccine, but like that's pretty significant. And uh, we know that they were at least looking at potential heart, um, inflammation you know even the cdc came out and had a meeting about it but see that's that's one of the things to me that is that i that makes me cautious or like reluctant is that like people know about this they're still pushing it on like young people who are in like a almost zero risk group and like look if, if you want to say this is a therapeutic it reduces the risk for high risk people that makes a lot of sense because there's always risks with anything like anything you can do is going to have risks so the fact that the vaccine has some risk associated to it shouldn't just automatically make it you know evil or whatever but then when they're pushing that on people who are basically at no risk anyway, and they're the highest risk from these side effects, then I start being questioning their motives, obviously. Absolutely. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So, and I think that's obviously what, but I mean, so basically, obviously I, I titled this the case for the vaccine. So would you, what would you say in like the, the elevator pitch version of like why you decided to get with, you don't have to give too many personal information, but if you were saying like, I decided to get it. This is why, this is what I think the case is for the vaccine, the 30 second elevator pitch. How would you uh, articulate that? Well, I mean, I certainly didn't want to get COVID. Uh, (laughs) I mean, you can die from it and people say, oh, well, it's only, you know, 1% or whatever. I think it's, it looks like by some of the numbers, it's more like 3% of a death rate um, and Delta maybe even higher. Um, so I definitely didn't want that, but you also have the long COVID where, you know, people get the disease and they're suffering from symptoms six or eight months after, you know, that they just never got over it. And that's kind of scary too. And of course, one of the, um, the, the symptoms, a uh, uh, result that can result from that is erectile dysfunction. <laughs> so that's not very good. Uh, so that's, I, I think that for me, that's enough. <laughs> that makes sense. So basically but, you're saying that because of these risks, and even though there are risks of vaccines, they're low. So you've just decided that you'd rather avoid the COVID risks for the, what appears to be the lower risk of, of the vaccine. Yeah, absolutely. Here's another question. Okay, now that you just mentioned that, the long COVID thing, now that it's pretty much accepted or admitted that the people with the, that the, have the vaccine can still get it, maybe at a lower rate, has there been any reports of them having the extended symptoms? Because I haven't heard that's something I don't know one way or the other. So like we know right, people yeah. with the vaccine can still get it. Can they still get the the quote unquote long COVID? Or is it seen I would to assume protect so. them? Yeah, I, I would assume, assume so, so just because it seems like they're still at risk for everything else, you know, including right. hospitalization. I mean it does it does seem that, like it's lower, but right. It seems like so maybe the chances of it are lower, but it, it's still I would assume that if you're getting the disease still, still getting symptoms, then you should still be able to get all the symptoms. But haven't heard one way or another on that specifically. What do you yeah, think, Jay? I don't mean to talk too much and keep you out of the loop. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, the audience is certainly chiming in. But a, a question from uh, Kyle here, if I can find it. Kyle, for this for you, Russ. Uh, are you concerned with the mandates? First question. And the second, I'll just give them both and you can answer. That so many folks are getting the jab that governments are eliminating a control group should adverse jab effects be found in years to come. So I'm not too sure what Kyle's suggesting there, but. Yeah, well, it sounds like he's asking about long-term effects of the vaccine, which we can't know. Um, But the same is true of long-term effects of getting COVID, you know, that we don't know how that affects people really. And especially the younger kids have turned out to have really weird effects that, you know, can affect their heart, their brain. 
and and we don't know how long that can last either. So I think with either one, you know, you're taking a risk. I the, I, I guess I'm a, a always um, just kind of tripped out by people who talk about you know uh, tracking devices in the in the in the vaccine and all this. I mean that can't even happen really. You got five doses in a vial of vaccine. So you can't, it would be hard to scoop out some microscopic little track. That's actually a good picture. point. That's actually you a good point. Like how would the they needle. know which of the vials is in which per, which part of that particular vial? It's not an individual vial necessarily for each person. And I've right. never bought into the, the really far, you know, like that it's, per, that it's designed to purposefully kill a large percent of the population or that it's specifically tracking or supports specifically supposed to hurt people. I think most of the issues are fall under the fact that science and um, everything that that falls under forever, people use the term, is a, just another human institution, just like politics and law and everything else. It can be corrupted. It can have mistakes, certainly with something where there's that much money and politics involved. And then there's the rush factor and just all the other things like that that, that are co- account for any problems with it. Well, let's go down the crazy rabbit hole here for a second. Got a couple mm-hmm. comments here. This one's from Stacking Nine Millimeter. People brainwashed by fraudulent science, pushed by criminals with conflicts of interest and agendas to lower the population while making a literal killing at the same time. It's one comment. Another comment. It's on an event I had a couple of weeks ago. If you're in Canada, Ontario specifically, I run the Ontario Prepper Survival Network. We do cool stuff, survival related, ontarioprepper.ca. It's a comment on an event I had a few weeks ago. It says uh, the, the vaccine spike in the protein creates demonic possession in people that take it. So there is obviously some people that uh, are have very extreme views that somebody like yourself that is pro-vaccine is clearly on the, the scientific side. What, how do you feel or what do you think about people that are suggesting demonic possession? Well, you know, I'll believe anything if I see evidence of it. And I certainly have not seen any evidence of that or even the existence of demons. That is, I mean, that's one thing that I comes back to a lot of these more extreme versions of like uh, theories about the vaccine is that there's a lot of people taking this thing across or the various versions of it across the world. Like we'll find out pretty quick, you know, within a few years, you know, if there are major, depending on how well, you know, statistics can be massaged and stuff. But like, if there is major heart issues, we'll see it for the next two years or something. If we, if there really are a 25% increase in heart problems in all these countries, and that'd be a pretty good indication. If this is really a, a population control experiment, you know, we'll have a lot of people going sterile or um, miscarriages or uh, dying, you know, pretty soon. So I'm not really worried about those more extreme things. And I think that if they are true, we'll find out pretty quick. And I don't know how they would be able to hide that at this point, but yeah, I don't, I don't believe in the really far reaching conspiracies about it. (laughs) What's your recommendation to other preppers that don't want to take it, Russ? That don't want to take it. Um, Well, I think that, uh, I mean, we live in a capitalist society, so your rights are kind of secondary to anybody's profits <laughs> and you're going to have insurance companies, health insurance companies that are going to be saying, why should I pay this guy's, you know, $600,000 medical bill when he had a vaccine and, <clears throat> and chose not to take it. Um, so I am concerned that something like that is going to start happening and, and people's medical bills are going to get refused from an insurance company. I don't know how we can stop that. Um, I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I have advice for anybody, really. Again, it's kind of a gut. I think it's you have to, have to go with your gut on this. Um, like we've kind of been saying throughout the show, is there's risks associated with either one, and um, you 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 assess yourself for the risks. Am I you know am I more at risk taking the vaccine or less at risk? And you make that choice. But I think, you know, things may be difficult for people who uh, who have chosen not to get it. And if 
if we do come up with government passports or, or you know, society passports and government mandates, I don't know what people are going to do to get around it. Definitely a frightening situation. Like I uh, had alluded to earlier, that's one of my main reasons. Like even if the if I had studied the vaccine and determined that there's no reason not to get it, it works perfectly. I would still be against, you know, a mandate of that kind, because I just decided a long time ago that deciding what goes in and out of my body is like a hard line for me, regardless of, you know, what it is. So I, I definitely have to be against that. But so that's, that's basically my stance on it. So what, what we're going to do in the future, if that does become like a hard line thing, like you need it to travel, you need it to, could be weird, but hopefully that won't be the case. There definitely seems to be stalling out at around the if, the, if you believe the government numbers at around the, you know, 75% number, I think of people getting vaccinated, maybe slightly lower. Some people say it's actually as low as like 40 or 50%. And that's why they're pushing it so hard. Regardless, there still is a decent chunk of the population that is not deciding to get it. So um, it won't be as easy for them to implement those things. Like we're seeing even in places like Italy and Australia, where people are starting to get a little bit fed up, but uh, who's to say what's going to happen in the next few years. We'll see. Interesting. Uh, all right. Oh, yeah, I don't think we have any further questions. Russ, thanks for doing this, man. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thanks. Absolutely. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, we're going to do a uh, totally unrelated prompt, I think, like a prepper question. Didn't you want to, Che? Sure. Right, Just like a you. what would you do in this situation kind of thing. I don't even know what it is. He's going to surprise me. Okay. And then we all get to, get to answer. Yeah. Um, I haven't decided which one. Which one should I do today? I think we haven't done the Batman yet, Batman one. So let's start there. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> Which Batman would make the best prepper out of all the Batmans? It's like all the actors, basically, and all the all the iterations in movies and oh, exactly. Which so what do we got here? Uh, Michael Keaton. Well, you want to start that early? I mean, you go back to Adam West, or how far are we yeah, going? Okay. Sure, fair. We do. There's actually one pre-Adam West, but I think that's. I don't remember the name. Yeah. We'll start with Adam West. Adam West, I'm gonna do this by memory here. Okay. Try it. Adam West, Michael Keaton. Then it was Val Kilmore. Then it was George Clooney. Then right. it was, was it Christian Bale. Christian that? Bale, yeah. Yeah, and then we got uh, Ben Affleck. Right. And now we're yeah. getting Robert Pattinson soon, but he hasn't made a movie yet. And that one, that one looks good. That music, that trailer. I haven't seen the trailer. Sound. It's like oh my god, it's like gripping, and I love Nirvana, which is a, they did a. They play a Nirvana song in the trailer. Um, so folks, you may have to check that out. So what's what's your intuition telling you there, Eric? Who's number one? Number one for to be a prepper? Yes. For prepping specifically, I think just I would have to go with the Christian Bale one. All right. I think so. Uh, just to be a contrarian, I'm gonna choose Ben Affleck. There you I go. Mean, he, he, <laughs> he came up with a device to take down Superman, so True, I guess, I guess true. That's pretty good. He's a smart one. Yeah, but shoot, yeah, Bruce Wayne Bucks and his utility belt. Yeah, you're all good. Sounds good. What about you, Che? So we got one for Ben Affleck, one for Christian Bale. Okay, well, definitely not Val Kilmore or um, George Clooney. <laughs> Michael Keaton, he's a little up there in the age. Um, I'm not a big Ben. Yeah, he did take down Superman. That's true. I'm going to go, I got to go Christian Bale. Like he's just all around the board. Seems to be the most ripped. Yeah, he's he was in shape, the gritty one, you know what I mean? So, yeah. All right. He's yeah. got a cool voice. Yeah, exactly. Where are they? <laughs> That's cool. Awesome. So we got it. Which Batman? We'll have all very uh, realistic questions like that in the future, too. So, uh, Russ, I appreciate it, man, for coming on and uh, talking with us. So, uh, do you have any I know you said you don't update it too often, but if you'd like to pimp your website or your blog, whatever, go ahead. Let us know where you can find people you find you online. Sure. It's uh, Reclaiming Our Birthright. And it's basically a blog trying to, you know, everybody always says we want to take our country back. And usually it's liberals saying they want to take it back from conservatives or the opposite. And from my perspective, we the people need to take it back from our politicians. They are corrupting and perverting our elections and that that's the fundamentals of our democracy we can't allow it we've got to stop it and we can't expect politicians to fix it because they broke it on purpose and they're profiting from the fact that our system is broken so it has to be fixed by we the people 
And that's what my blog is trying to cool. get across. I agree. I don't disagree. And that was, uh, what was it? Taking our country back? <laughs> reclaiming our birthright. Re re sorry. I was like, reclaiming our birthright yeah. is that .com or what? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. The dot .blogspot.com. Cool. Sounds good, man. So go check that out, people. Uh, like I said, appreciate you having on for us. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll see you again in the future. All right. Take care. You too. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Fantastic guest. And was not expecting that. I don't know Russ from uh, really not, you know, we should have more of a screening process. Probably shouldn't tell this out because people will just email. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> it's worked out for us in the past, but yeah, it's good. It worked out well. PP pictures or whatever. Yeah, right. Um, Someone just shows up and they're just completely naked in front of the camera or something. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. Uh, I'm going to put his website in the link a few times. Yeah, reclaimingourbirthright.blogspot.com, I believe. So go check that out, guys. What's going on with the back? Thank him, thank him for coming on. So, yeah, so we went through, we got our prepper myth busted. Those of you who came in late, go back and watch the beginning of this once we come up live. Found out which Batman was the best one to, <laughs> to join your prepping group. And we got to talk a little bit about the potential case for the vaccine for preppers. And as I uh, seems like he had a pretty realistic approach to it, you know, wasn't one of the um, religious zealots about it, which is good. I can appreciate that. Because like I said, uh, there are certain circumstances under which I, you know, I might be willing to take it, but I think they'd be pretty lean for me personally at this point. And uh, one of the reasons is that like at this point, like I said, it's all, for me, it's all about not doing things that I don't want to do. And they're, they're becoming so religious and so annoying that um, at this point, I would literally rather die of COVID than be on the same side as them. <laughs> so it's like, there's no shame in, in death. You know what I mean? But these like skits and weird propaganda that they're doing on late night show with people literally dressing up as vaccines. I'm like, you can miss me with that shit, as the kids say. Like, nope, you lost me. There's no, I don't care what, any, any science at this point is irrelevant. Like, I'm just not willing to join you. But, uh, Glad we could hear a, a reasonable perspective we, from someone who has we, taken it. Did you care to share, share publicly what you think where that line is in terms of getting the shot? If there, if let's let me. Oh, for me, it would be it would be per, per um only exclusively related to the risk of the disease because like right now I've already made up my mind I'm not getting it from like a legal or government perspective like if they start saying if you can't fly you can't I don't care they can't make you do it talk about the access to because here right. in Canada they're saying you can't sit in restaurants anymore unless you've got the vaccine passports right so is there is there let's just say you're in a martial arts and your dojo has a policy imposed by the government to say you cannot enter unless you've got the vaccine passport where would that from that perspective would you yeah would you something that you participate in or your work for example if you care to get into it if, you, if your work's just look at it's a government thing we don't have a choice you cannot work here unless you get the shot is there a line there that you would say okay i would get the shot no at this point no at this point i'm, I'm totally not going to be allowed to, to be forced to do it if um okay i'm not like doesn't matter what the restriction is i'm not getting it at this point Screw it. so right yeah exactly it. It's, uh, that's like I said a long time ago because I think it's really it's it's way too easy to regardless of what the issue is whether that's gun rights or this vaccine or whatever each incremental thing is never going to be that big of a deal you know like oh it's just for your job okay then I just get the jab now it's just a booster now it's just a little card to go on the plane or whatever so each individual step you could make a compelling case for why that isn't a big deal but at some point you're going to have to draw the line and is it when we're in this situation like Equilib the movie Equilibrium, we're having to take daily doses of this thing to keep our emotions in check, you know? So for me, the hard line that I determined ahead of time was if I don't want to put something into my body, then that's the hard line, like period. If I don't want to do it, regardless of how lame the reason might, like the, the reasons for the vaccine risk, I don't think is extremely high. Like if I, if someone held me down and vaccinated me, I wouldn't be like staying up all night sweating, worrying that I was going to die. It's more about that I've decided I don't want this. So you're not a free person if you don't get to decide what's in your, you know, blood. What kind of slavery if you can't, you know, you can't even have any control over what's in your own blood. So that's the, the line to me. It has nothing. If they say I can't go to the grocery store or whatever, I need to become a revolutionary, live out in the woods like the Red Dawn, then that's where I'm at right now. 
I hopefully don't think it'll get that bad. But uh, I think, like I said, I think there's enough people that it would make that difficult if, if those people continue to stand their ground as well. So we'll see what happens. Could be an interesting another year or two for sure. Yes, it certainly will be. I'll co-sign that. I recently had to decline a trip to go to up to your neck of the woods. Had some friends that were going to Banff and uh, uh, traveled them a lot and couldn't go because they you have to have the vaccine passport or what a proof of it to get in to the country. BR, so the like BRG, bum. once my job mandates it, I'll go live in the woods. He could have just like, he like said, he said that. I'll just yeah. go live in the woods. But he had that. <laughs> like the Unabomber. <laughs> he just meant living in the woods like the Unabomber, not blowing people up like the Unabomber. <laughs> he believed that guy's brother sold him out. Unbelievable. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, uh, you've got some memes. Let's. Uh, yeah, let me them. pop up. It's just a few. And uh, it's funny because they're all related to. Um, I'm glad Russ turned out to be a chill dude. Yep. But I was prepared to destroy some souls if I needed to, you know? <laughs> <laughs> So um, let me see what I got. These are, I don't think I've, I've, so these are mostly vaccine related, which is funny, which is not, honestly, was not on purpose. I just, that's what I've been collecting over the, the, uh, the past week or so, but it wasn't specifically because we were going to do this talk. All right, let me share a screen. I actually made this one because someone is asking about it. I don't know if you've seen Game of Thrones. He says, you're going you're gonna to die over a vaccine? Someone is. <laughs> and then we got, if you got vaccinated, you fold under pressure. You're definitely snitching. <laughs> so you're hearing it right here. If you get vaxxed, you're a snitch, or you will be at some point. And we got, uh, in 100 years, we will have flying cars, the reality of 2021. <laughs> rip, rip through the toilet paper, or the paper towel, even though it does it exactly like it says. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Yeah, I can see it. And then we got, uh, I talked about this in a recent video. Inflation silver lining, higher salaries. Next article. Inflation has turned $15 an hour into a setback. Oh, I can't believe it. How could this have happened? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so go watch my latest video where I talk about inflation. Then we've got plant-based ingredients. Water, pea protein, expeller, pressed canola oil, refined coconut oil, rice protein, all this stuff. In Animal-based ingredients, beef. <laughs> Yeah, and I have a video coming up too. You guys should stay tuned for for the worst prepper food that people are buying out there. The worst, and maybe you can. Uh, that yeah, the plant see, see if you agree when I do that video. It's pretty bad. It was one of those things that I always knew was probably not great, but I looked into the ingredients and was just blown away. Like it's like almost literal poison. So here we have no one. The government. Now, don't be afraid. I love you. <laughs> you guys haven't seen Misery. She kidnaps this author. She's like, I speak of uh, super stalkers. She kidnaps this author who she likes and basically breaks his legs and everything so he can't leave. Yeah. Because she loved him. because she loves him so much. He's a crazy super fan. Stalker would love to tie me up. Because <laughs> she loves you. She loves. You. And then we have people when multi-billion dollar companies exploiting people for profit. No, they're all freaking out. But when multi-billion dollar companies exploiting people for profit or the, these other ones are like, yay. <laughs> and then we have same thing, same theme. Big Pharma versus the Democrats around 2019. Battling it out. Big Pharma and the Democrats in 2021. Yeah. Butt buddies. <laughs> it's just, there's, this is just wrong, dude. Yeah. And then we got flu season cases in the USA, 34 million, 30 million, 30, 24, 45, 36, 1800. <laughs> Hilarious. And then this is unrelated, but since Halloween's coming up, there are three types of girls on Halloween. <laughs> the sexy whatever version of every costume, the really elaborate spooky ones, and the ones who just sit there and eat candy. <laughs> And then this was actually not really a meme so much as it's a kind of a thought exercise for taking ivermectin and why it's so weird that people are against it is because as a pretty much proven when you take a human dosage to have extremely low side effects, there's only four possible outcomes. It works and is safe because we know it's safe. So if you, there's either, there's a benefit if it works. And uh, if you don't give it to a patient, then there's a harm. If ivermectin doesn't work, but it's still safe because we know it's safe. Then there's it's it's worse neutral, whether you give it or don't give it. 
So there's really no outcome that you can have with giving the proper dosages that, that would be bad. And mo all, everything you hear about people taking and having any sort of adverse reaction, really like crapping their pants or whatever, is because they're bu they're going to the pet store or the animal stores buying the horse ivermectin, which is for the most part is the same stuff, but the dosages are much different. So it's a much stronger version of it most of the time. So they're taking too much and it's like upsetting their stomach and stuff. But uh, you can take it, it's taken all, and that was one of the things, let me see if I have any more names and I'll talk about ivermectin in a second. But yeah, so the, the September 7th, 2020, when we didn't have any vaccines, there were 25,000 new COVID cases. And a year later, when we have 170 million people vaccinated, there's 300,000 COVID cases. So it's like, yeah, interesting. Wow. And then this one says, looks like you subscribed to my only hands. <laughs> <laughs> And left hook <laughs> and then we have three articles in a row from uh april may and june of 2021 cdc has not seen a link between heart inflammation and the vaccines then a month later cdc is looking into heart inflammation in some young vaccine recipients another month fda to add a warning about rare heart inflammation to the, and this is what i was talking about with russ is like just the whole story is constantly changing and they keep making it worse and worse. And I'm like, at this point, I just don't trust them anymore. And my risk is extremely low. So I'm not going to mess with it. Yeah. And then here's an unrelated meme. It says, has anyone told you you're beautiful today? She says, no. Well, there's always tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and then year six of two weeks to flatten the curve. The guy's wearing like 18 masks. <laughs> We're six feet of masks. And then here's some good tip for you, Jay. It says, save money by dating an unvaccinated girl since they don't allow them in restaurants. <laughs> 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 Until we meet again. <laughs> and then here's the same one. It says, guys, get yourself an unvaccinated girl. You can't take her to a restaurant. And she's not allowed in the clubs. Follow me for more money-saving relationship advice. <laughs> Brilliant. And then how do you interact with someone who still wears a face mask? <laughs> <This makes fun. laughs> so yeah. All right, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the memes. But yeah, really quick, the, the ivermectin thing. Remember, I remember early on when we first started doing the COVID, we didn't know what the hell was going on. This thing looked like it could be pretty scary. Maybe have a 5%, 10% death rate. You know, we didn't know what was going on. Cases were spreading really wildly. But Africa specifically, which we know in general, you know, not that it's, you know, that it's all, you know, backwards hut dwellers or something, that, you know, there are real cities and everything. But in general, the facilities in a lot of these African countries are behind a lot of these Western countries and Asian countries where it was spreading. So we're saying, like, why aren't we seeing the same number of cases and deaths and things? We think it would be spreading really rampantly through Africa if it's spreading like this in China and, and Western Europe and stuff. And then I re just re relatively recently saw a map of Africa and Europe, and it showed the African countries where there is widespread ivermectin usage because of it's an anti-malarial. And it coincided perfectly with the lower, the countries that had much, much lower rates of COVID because they're already taking it for river blindness, which it won a Nobel Peace Prize for its use in treating that in humans, for malaria and other uh, anti-parasitical uses. So that explains it to me why we never saw these massive, horrible outbreaks of it in Africa is because it's spread and um, how bad it was was definitely stunted by the wide, already widespread use of ivermectin. Right. And I did speak to a nurse about that specifically because we had that question a couple of weeks ago with respect to ivermectin in Canada and accessibility. She seems to be of the conclusion that it's something you can't just walk into a pharmacy and, and get. You need to, it's a vet medication. You need a prescription. So, so there you have that. Um, I don't know what it's like in Canada and I don't know what it's like in all parts of the U.S. now, but it is a prescription medication for the most part in the human form. Doctors can still prescribe it to you. I know that up until recently, you could get it without a prescription for animal use or even without a vet prescription as far as I know but they've really started controlling it now or potentially just sold out because for some reason they're worried about people taking it. But interestingly enough, Merck, which I believe is a country that already makes ivermectin, is coming up with this anti-COVID drug, which is like fucking exactly like ivermectin. <laughs> they're going to make it way more expensive. But at least that one freaking works. So whatever. And it wouldn't and it's in it too. Yeah. It's that, like even when we're talking about the stream of thought with respect to antibiotics and Fish antibiotics and the ones that are used for humans, in a lot of cases, it's literally 
the same yeah. film, except one goes into a box. With fish I've, got, I've got some of those, <laughs> and I recommend stocking up on that because I've seen a weird amount of crackdown from the FDA in the past year or so on all sorts of stuff like that, even supplements like NAC. They're, they're saying you can't sell it as a supplement anymore. You can only buy it as just a whatever it is. Just You can buy it you know, still, but they can't sell it as a su supplement. That sounds like a great, I know we sort of have the same opinion on it right now. We already mm -hmm. know the answer, but for the argument's sake across the board, that would be maybe a good prepper myth segment for next time is do fish antibiotics work just as effectively as human antibiotics? Is it the same thing? Because the myth, I would say the the myth right now is that it is the same. You no, know what I mean? Like that that. So then we'll confirm or deny that. Yeah. Yeah. The myth among the preppers is that you can just buy the fish antibiotics and use it. So we'll see. I'll talk to some. I actually know a couple pharmacists and whatnot, so I can talk to them, see what they see what they say. But that's cool. But yeah, for the yeah, I would look into the NAC. Um, NAC is actually amazing at reducing hang effects of a hangover. If you take like three of them before you go drinking and another three before you go to sleep, you have like almost no hangover because it supports liver function and all this stuff. Yeah, it's N, -N A or N acetylcysteine. It's okay. like a yeah, amino acid precursor or something. But um Is it over yeah, the that, these drugs gotta fill me in here. Well you used to be able to get it on Amazon because it's just a supplement, but now you can go to like you can Google it and there's still places that sell it. You're just not allowed to sell it as a supplement anymore. You can just sell it as a thing. All so, right. but they're restricting that. I have no doubt that in the future, they'll try to restrict antibiotics, you know, and stuff like ivermectin. So any m medications that you can really get and supplements that you know you're going to use are useful. I would um, try to get that stuff now if it, if it has some shelf life. Steve Hall, Fix Mox, uh, which is a sort of an abbreviated weird way of Amoxicillin. Um, amoxicillin. Can't get it no longer around here. I don't know where you are, Steve. I know you can order them from China. And Let me a... look. I bought some from Chewy.com before, which is a massive pet store online. Um, I would be surprised if they still have it. Yeah, or maybe save it for the big prepper myth review. Yeah, but it looks like they do have some. Some is it some er uh, erythromycin they have, and maybe a few others. But there was a company I forget the company that we that everyone used to buy it from, and that's the Chewies was selling that. But uh, yeah, I'll try to look into that, and if there are some sources I can find, I'll bring that up with the on the next one. For the if the myth is, is confirmed, what's that? Interesting, interesting. NAC. Cool. Yeah, NAC. Look into it. It's it great. also doubles as the like a sounds like a hip hop band or something. Yeah, NAC, NWA, something like that. <laughs> cool, man. Uh, That's another one in the books, I think. Run yeah, that was great. I appreciate everyone watching. Hopefully, that went a little. We got our guest back. A little more structure to it. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, email me with ideas and any of the myths, especially because that's going to be coming pretty much exclusively from you guys. If you hear about something around the prepper community, and you're like, you know what? I've always heard this, and I really don't know if it's true. Hit us up with it. We'll do our best to try and figure it out one way or the other. But thanks for watching. I don't know yet if we're going to do next week or two weeks, so check the website. Yeah, so you have yeah. to go to preppertrifecta.com, folks, if you want to, the countdown that we have. I'll set that up in two minutes. Uh, with respect to the next show, probably two weeks. Probably and two weeks. I think two weeks works well, especially when we really want to set up, you know, guests and the top and research the myths. It's worked well for me. Who's familiar with my channel? I have a channel called Prepper Logic, and if you are, I'm launching a new video in the next ten minutes called Ooh. Dark Prepper Mindset. No more Mr. Nice Guy. I like and that. I love the thumbnail on it, and it's a, a dark way of determining me. Me and I actually got this idea from Eric and sort of elaborated on it. There's a way of marking people in a post SHTF situation, somebody in your community that you banished or got rid of, you would, uh, that's all I'm going to say. So check it out. Anyway, so you can Google this if you'd like. Yeah, those have all, the, the Dark Prepper Mindset videos have all been awesome. So you guys definitely need to, need to check that out. And I'm going to be releasing a video soon. I've already filmed it. I'm doing the last bit of editing because I was having a hell of a lot of problems with the, like digital shit. Um, but I did a review of the movie Greenland, which is, I think, one of the better shit the fan movies has come out in the last few years. Okay. So I did a, 
yeah, it's it's solid. I mean, there's nothing amazing about it, but um, I would watch it before watching my video because I do spoilers throughout it. But it's like an hour. The video ended up being like an hour long. So, you know, it's talking about survival and uh, lessons and things you can learn from the movie. And then I have another video coming out soon about, like I said, the worst survival slash prepping food that's out there. You yeah. should absolutely avoid. It's garbage. So, so that one we're looking forward to. Appreciate it, guys. And we will see you uh, 